Hello everybody, I am Blake with Nature Notes today and I thought since the weather is turning nice finally and the snow is exiting that it would be good to talk about wild edibles that we can find around the Schmeekly area and Stevens Point. So first, I want to show everybody fiddleheads. Uh, the fiddlehead comes from the ostrich fern. It can be identified because a stem makes a U shape. Um, it also uh, generally doesn't have hair and it's covered by a brownish uh, fibery paper. Uh, so it is easy, pretty easy to identify. The next plant that we have is asparagus. Uh, I like to say I always look for the wispies and the crispies because at the end of the season uh, it does like to go into long, wispy, uh, dead strands and that's how you can easily find it the next season is just pay attention to where they are. You can see here the fresh asparagus coming up. <clears throat> Another common wild edible that we find a lot of times just in the parking lots or on sidewalks is purslane. Purslane is a very delicious herb. It's citrusy, it goes in salads, it's got a lot of good vitamins, um, and it can pretty much be harvested anywhere that you walk outside. Up here in the Stevens Point area, we have a lot of staghorn sumac. This is also known as Roost Typhia. Um, there are a few species of staghorn or uh, sumac up here. Uh, some are poisonous, so you do need to be careful. Um, but this is really good. The heads, the buds, can actually be made into a tea, and it is delicious. Uh, now we're going to get into the mushrooms on our list, and uh, as with any wild edibles, I like to advise, uh, please don't go around eating before you can 100% identify them. Uh, mushrooms can be deadly, as you will see later in the presentation without proper identification. Uh, so first we have the pheasant back, polyporus swastmosis. Uh, this is edible. It smells a lot like watermelon rind when you first pick it. Uh, after frying it, the watermelon smell does go away. Um, it is one of my favorite mushrooms. Second on the list is, everybody knows, the morel mushroom or morcella. Um, these do need to be cooked, however. Um, morels are toxic, uh, so until you cook them, do not eat them. Another species that I like to gather around here are the oyster mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms are high in a lot of beneficial nutrients. Uh, they are known for cancer fighting and anti-inflammatory. Uh, this is a picture of some golden oysters, which are actually, um, they were grown at, for food and they managed to escape captivity and they are now out in the wild around here. So that is a plus. One of the cooler mushrooms that I like to uh, find is Caprinus comatus or your shaggy mane mushroom. Uh, the cool feature about these is they only last for about a day and then they do what's called deliquescing. Uh, or they form into like a black gelatinous liquid. This is the spores of the mushroom. Uh, even though it looks kind of gross, it's still edible in this stage. My absolute favorite mushroom is Lataporus sulfurus, or chicken of the woods. We have two different species up here. This is the yellow pored uh, sulfurus. We also have another one which has the white pores. It's technically a different species, but they do taste the same. And they're both edible. Uh, this is pretty easy to identify because there's not a lot of mushrooms that look like this uh, shape and are this color in the woods. This is the spiny puffball. As with any puffball, as long as the inside is totally white, it is good to eat. Uh, puffballs should just be cooked. Um, there are species of puffballs that are not edible, but the inside is black. And they're technically not a puffball, so all you have to do is cut it open to find out if it is edible. This mushroom right here is uh, known as a wood ear, and you can see why. Uh, it's actually used in a lot of Asian dishes. Uh, the wood ear is a great mushroom, uh, except it makes your blood really thin, so you got to be careful when you eat it. Uh, if you get cut, there have been cases of people eating these and, and bleeding out. Uh, so it is kind of can be a dangerous situation. The honey mushroom or amarilla is a common species around here that we find in the fall. Uh, it's very uh, parasitic on trees. Usually they say that once a honey mushroom moves into the area that the woods is doomed uh, because it takes over the property so fast. These are some beautiful Ganoderma sugae, also known as a reishi mushroom. These are found on the um, 
the hemlock tree, so therefore known as a suge. Um, we have two actual different species in this picture. Uh, they are known as the varnish shelf. They are used over in Asia medicinally quite often. Here is a close-up of what it looks like. Uh, as you can see, the top is nicely varnished and they're really pretty mushrooms. <clears throat> One of the ones that's super easy to identify that uh, is out here in the woods, but it's not super common, is lion's mane. Uh, there's actually two different species that we have around here of lion's mane. These are used for medicinal as well as uh, edible mushrooms. I know a lot of people that love to eat lion's mane mushrooms. Uh, when you cook them in olive oil, olive oil does have a, have a tendency to break down the nutrients to be more bioavailable to your body. So cooking mushrooms in olive oil is always your best bet. <clears throat> we have next the crown tip coral. Uh, this is a good one to find. It tastes a lot like ramen noodles out in the woods. Um, this one you got to be careful because there are quite a few lookalikes. Uh, this is the crown tip coral. It can be identified by looking at the very tip. Each tip should have four little tips to it. If it looks different or is a different color, it's probably not the right species and you're going to want to stay away from that. Oh, this is one of my favorites. I like seafood and this is seafood of the way and this is actually known as a lobster mushroom. However, it's not a mushroom itself. It's actually a fungus that takes over uh, different mushrooms. Um, both species that it takes over are technically toxic before the mushroom takes over them. It therefore renders uh, any of the toxins totally uh, viable uh, as it makes it so we can eat them. Um, and so that's pretty cool. This is a close-up of the lobster mushroom. It could be identified by its bright red surface. Here is what a, a good mushroom, uh, chaga. Uh, it can be found on a few different trees other than birch. However, uh, it's only medicinal quality. Uh, they say is found on birch trees. Chaga is a sterile, non-vascular sclerotial mass, which means that nutrients don't go in and out of the chaga. So once your chaga is formed, uh, it is absolutely fine to harvest any time of year. If you hear that it's only good to harvest in the winter, it's absolute wives' tales. Last but not least on our edible list, list, I have one of my favorites to find out along the river. It is the golden chanterelle mushroom. Uh, however, the chanterelle must be uh, taken care of when you're finding it because it has a toxic lookalike known as the jack-o'-lantern. The jack-o'-lantern will cause severe diarrhea and upset stomach, and I promise you make that mistake and it will not be made again. The last mushroom on our list is one that you need to absolutely avoid. This is called the Destroying Angel, or Amanita phylloides. Uh, this will shut your liver down in two to three days, even consuming a small bite. Uh, it's pretty much, once you eat this, you are definitely going to die. So stay away from mushrooms like this. And again, uh, please don't go out foraging unless you know 100% uh, what you have, and go and do your own research. Thank you very much, and have a good day.